Today's episode is all about light and how it's impacting our health. My guest is Daria Mockold. She is actually my assistant coach in higher coaching, and she is super smart and super educated and honestly the best spoken person that I know on this topic. So I asked her to come on and educate you guys about how light, the different spectrums of light that happen throughout the day, how those are impacting our health and how our artificial light environments are severely negatively impacting our health. And if you aren't educated about this, please listen to this whole episode, find out. We're gonna link up in the show notes um, uh, an app that I talked about, another app that she talked about. And then also she has a free uh, seven day course for you on understanding these things. So you can check that out in the show notes as well. But I have just gotten to the point where I'm like, this is one of the biggest problems in human health and we are severely underestimating it. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's talk about light and how it is impacting our health with Daria Mockold. Okay, so Daria, uh, I had to have you on to talk about sunlight and how our bodies interact with all the different light spectrums. And I'm going to tee this off for the audience by just having you guys think for a second. I want you guys to imagine that it's nighttime. It's like black, totally dark. And you go into a gas station and the gas station has all of that, like the horrible bright lights, you know, and just think about how you feel in there. And then imagine any time of day, early morning, midday, sunset, dusk, nighttime. Think about how your body feels in any of those environments because of the lighting, right? And it's like on a very intuitive basis, we can feel the juxtaposition of that. We can feel when light spectrums are not going great with our bodies. And, you know, before we started, uh, I was like, you know, we were talking about just what we we're going to discuss. And you were like, yeah, we just need to remind people that the, the sun isn't toxic. <laughs> so let's kick off this amazing discussion about light with that question in mind. Like, why do people not need to be afraid of the sun? And what do they need to know about how sunlight and the different light spectrums impact their health? Yeah, well, I'm very excited to be here and talk about this topic. I'm very passionate about it. And um, uh, why is sun not toxic? Well, let's see. How many studies do we need to run to understand if it's toxic or not? Like, <laughs> there is one study um, that is uncorruptible. Uh, that's the longest that's been running uh, for over 2 million years. Uh, that's called evolution. <laughs> <laughs> evolution of the hominids, right? And we know from that study um, that is not flawed, that anybody can look up <laughs> because they can see themselves in the mirror, um, why the sun is not toxic. Because um, people know about photosynthesis in the plants, but they don't know about photosynthesis in the humans, in the right. mammal, in, right. in animals. Uh, you know, like I think sometimes about like how men know very well how cars work. But when it comes to knowing how our bodies work, we're not good at that. Right. You know, as people, we don't come to like think about this stuff. We just rent our bodies to authorities and kind of don't right. use it critical thinking. But as Tara said, right, like when you get into the sun, immediately you feel good because sun, nature has made you being addicted to the sun because you release endorphins when you're in the sun mm -hmm. why is mm -hmm. that why do we have photoreceptors that accept all the different frequencies you in, including uv light right people mm -hmm. are afraid of uv light but it's important to say that how did we come to the conclusion that uv light is um carcinogenic is we took mice that are nocturnal animals that have fur we put them in a lab under artificial light without the red light that's always present in the sun. And mm -hmm. we ran, ran those experiments on a nocturnal animal that whose photosynthetic um, circadian rhythms are completely different to ours. They are completely opposite. So how do we think we're basing our whole uh, lifestyle recommendations by all these authorities on these kind of studies. And this is just ridiculous. I want people to understand that this doesn't make any sense. It's beyond ridiculous. Mm. 
You, so you, you talked about photosynthesis in the human body. Yeah. Can you yeah. elaborate on that? So if we look at a leaf, um, it's green, right? Because it's ha it has chlorophyll in it. And we can uh, think of chlorophyll in the plants as um, the, the equivalent of that in us is mitochondria. There are little organelles that are inside of our cells that also kind of spin, but we spin ATPase to produce ATP uh, when we're in the sun. Um, when we are in red light, in the red, red light frequencies of the sun, we're making ATP without any food present. And ATP, so, just in case you're not aware, is cellular energy, our yeah. body energy system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we, we should talk also about ATP. It's, uh, it's pretty fascinating uh, because it's connected to melanin. Uh, but what I was going to say about photosynthesis is um, that chloroplast that contains chlorophyll is like the melanin that we have contains mm -hmm. um, this um, intrinsic property of converting um, sun energy into chemical energy. Because when sunlight hits melanin, because we have melanin in the skin, but we also have it in the inside of us. And we can talk about that. Um, so when those photons um, hit melanin, it dissociates the water that our mitochondria make into hydrogen, oxygen, and electrons. And these are the three elements that feed mitochondria to make ATP. Imagine that. You know, I always like on a very basic level, which I think you're hitting on too, I'm like, if the sun was bad for us, why would the earth be set up this way? Right. Obviously, we don't want to burn ourselves and you, you, we get biofeedback for, naturally of, hey, that was too much for you right now. Right. So it's yeah. like very logical. Right. But in terms of the sun being bad, look around like obviously it was designed for us for a reason. And OK, before we get deeper into all the melanin and stuff, because I definitely want to, um, Let's talk, you know, skin cancer and those types of fears. What are your thoughts around that? Well, there's a very big study. It's pretty famous. Um, from 2016 in Sweden, um, they took a whole cohort of 20,000 people and they wanted to see how exactly sunlight causes, causes cancer. And they found exactly the opposite because they found that the more people expose themselves to sunlight, the less their mortality rate from uh, uh, skin cancer, melanoma and non-melanoma cancer was. Mm. So um, anybody can look it up. Um, uh, and um, yeah, um, we can go so many ways here, but um, it's just, you know, ridiculous that we protect ourselves from the sun with our clothing and sunscreen and sunglasses, but then we go inside, we turn on artificial light that has nothing to do with the frequencies from the sun. It has very um, narrow bands of blue light. Uh, blue mm -hmm. light on its own is, is not like bad or, or good because it's present in the sun. But when it's unopposed synthetic blue light that's man-made, and we expose it to, uh, to ourselves during night. We're shining screen. We're shining blue light on our thyroid. Um, it's um, blue light on the spectrum is very like it's right close to the UV light. So it's also high energy, um, short wavelengths, and they penetrate deeper, like the, the, pretty deep into the skin, um, into the body. So why, why is it normal to hide away from the sun? wear shades and um, cats and all of that stuff. Um, and clothes is also a problem. I know it's 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 kind of funny, but um, there is a reason why uh, homo sapiens don't have fur in them. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. we could talk about that. It's, it's really interesting also, but, and then we go inside and and shine that synthetic light and we don't protect ourselves. Why do you think it's it, it makes sense? Yeah. Which I mean, is... I'm inside right now because it's early morning in Hawaii and it was dark when I was setting up and I can feel it. I can feel the difference. And I think if we start paying more attention to that, like how we feel as a result of our light environment, a lot of this will come with common sense. And, you know, that's a super interesting study from Sweden. Um, I definitely, maybe we can link that up in the show yeah. notes. Yeah. Um, but I, 
I also think that, you know, a big part of the problem from oxidative stress from the sun is that we are so separate from it for so long. And then what do we do? The only time somebody goes and actually exposes these parts of their bodies that never see the sun, they go to the beach for six hours, right? And yeah. then we get burning yeah. and that That's creates the problem. obviously yeah. oxidative stress. Because and yeah, uh, because if we don't expose ourselves to the morning frequencies when UV is not present at sunrise, we cannot prepare our skin. Our skin and our brain don't know, like, when did actually the day start? Because I didn't get the signal. I didn't get the memo. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, we're designed to be outside up to 12 hours, like you live on, at the equator. Uh, the day is 12 hours long. We're designed to be outside all day long. So imagine like in the like in the prehistoric times when people uh, were in the cave, it was only like when they were sick, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, we're spending, it's like we got our light backwards because we're spending 95% of the time indoors with mm -hmm. this alien light. Mm -hmm. And we don't even think twice about it, but... And we're uh, like, what, like a hundred years in to electricity? And when was yeah. the light bulb? You know, like a hundred some years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 150 yeah. years. We're only yeah. 150 years yeah. in. And in human evolution, that's a very short amount of time. This is all very new to us, right? It's like plastic. Plastic is us. super <laughs> new. Like, right. Yeah. And so yeah. a lot of these things, they're, it's hard to distinguish, right? It's like, oh, well, you have this problem and you have that problem and you have that problem. You're never going to think, well, it's because my body isn't able to make energy appropriately because I'm never in nat yeah. the natural environment that it was meant to be. But those of us who are nerdy about this know that that is absolutely the case. And I'm really, really inviting listeners to start noticing how you mm -hmm. feel as a result of your light environment. Okay. Yeah. Early morning sunlight while we're kind of on this like anti sunlight conversation, can you talk about sunglasses? Yeah. Well, uh, what happens when you block sun frequencies from your eyes? Uh, it's important because our eyes um, have a um, rotating uh, retinal uh, pigmentum uh, epithelium rotating cells at the back of our eyes that that are designed to uh, feed that frequency into um, SCN, suprachiasmatic nucleus, in the brain. That is the master clock of your body. All the other cells in the body that have gene clocks in front of them, all of them have that circadian rhythm clocks because all hormones are released on a clock. They're supposed to ebb and flow throughout the day and throughout the night, right? So they take clues on what time it is from your ma master clock in your brain, the SCN. And the CN takes the, the time through the eyes from the sun. So when you block those frequencies, your brain doesn't know what's going on. Okay. And it's like, I like to compare it to uh, like um, post office or an airport. Like your brain is the tower that's traffic control tower. And if it doesn't have the time right, all the airplanes are coming in at different times and they're crashing. Mm -hmm. You need to reset that. So you need to clue in your body at least several times a day popping out and you know it's it's funny like when people used to smoke when it was cool you know people would go yeah. out every hour for five minutes and it was okay because of the addiction well how about like if people are worried about like well i'm i work in an office how what do i do how about saying like you're addicted to the sun like mm -hmm. uh, you know it's like it's our birthright right yeah. and as americans know it's people in the u.s know like you have to fight for freedom it's it's not a given unfortunately and many yeah. people will be pissed, uh, like listening to this and, uh, you know, realizing that, wow, okay, I'm sitting in a box without any um, natural light coming in uh, because modern glass filters out UV and red and filters in the blue, unfortunately. So you're become even more toxic inside if you're sitting with the light coming in through the window. So there are solutions you can pop out um, you know, like leaving the window a little bit open because light has this uh, property to it. It's like water, it floods in. So things like that will protect your eyes with uh, blue blocking glasses and start, just start seeing sunrise. I'm sorry um, if you have to wake up early to do that. But if, if, you know, if it's a struggle to wake up early and see the sunrise, it's a big sign that your circadian rhythm is bad. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, you know mm -hmm. 
if it's a struggle, then it, it has to be worked on because um, when your hormones are off, you know, it's like all, all hell will break loose. Um, there's no free lunch there. You have to mm -hmm. clue your body in on what time it is and start with the sunrise every day. Yeah, to back that up, I mean, a uh, certification I was doing on hormones, uh, the Dutch chest certification, obviously this comes up a lot and they, they, the way they put this, I just, it really stood out to me. I was like, oh, I love that. They're like, it's about the contrast. You need a strong contrast. You want it's dark. You want it dark. Like look at nature. There is a lot of light contrast from pitch black yeah. to yeah. the brightness of full day. Right. And that is what creates an, an, ideal hormone cascade in our body because of these photoreceptors that we have. And we are existing in this mid range, right? You, you turn yeah. on your artificial lights and then you get in your car, you put your sunglasses on because you don't want it to be too bright. Then you drive into more artificial light where it's, you know, controlled, not too bright, not too dark. And you come home and you do the same thing. And that's your whole life. And your body, like you said, your body just is confused. It's like, I'm not really exactly sure when am, when am I supposed to produce melatonin? What's going on? Like your serotonin yeah. goes down everything, all your hormone yeah. goes yeah. downstream, yeah. you know, and you it's know, they, so important. Yeah. Um, you know, they measured the luminescence. It's very important. What are you talking about? It's the luminescence. So when you're inside, it's, it could be up to a thousand times um, darker in a normal room. I'm not talking about night. Mm -hmm. Then it's outside, depending on the weather. And when we're outside, um, um, so basically when, when we use, um, artificial light at night, it's a thousand times brighter than it's supposed to be in darkness, in pitch dark. So mm -hmm. it's a million different, a million, million times difference. Well, mm -hmm. 1000 by 1000, by 1000 in luminescence. So we're, we live in yeah. this constant twilight and that's yeah. why people have problems with their dopamine as, as well. You know, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my friend Jenny Lynn Griffiths, who's been on the show, um, specializes in gut health, and in her course for this is for gut health. This is for healing leaky gut. Gut health circadian rhythm is one of the big parts of it, and she talks to me about this all the time. I, maybe you know the name of it. I can't remember the name of the app, but there's an app that you can use. I'll have to find it for you guys. Um, but I'll just ask her. <laughs> But you hold it up and it will tell you how many, you know, lumens, or I'm not exactly sure what the measurement mm. is, hold it up to the sun. And that's part of her, you know, assignment is hold this up to the lights in, mm -hmm. in the room in your house and now go outside and hold it up. And it's this ash. And that's her way of getting them to see like, holy crap, this is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Which mm -hmm. I think is a helpful tool and strategy, but yeah. you know, I, I, I share that one because that app is cool and I need to find the name of it. But two, like, this is a, this is a course on gut health, right? But she recognizes because she is a functional practitioner. She recognizes that they need to get their circadian rhythm in line if they want their body to function optimally. So whether it's hormones, gut health, you it's name everything. it. You everything where you look, it leads to light. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So um, talking about the gut, um, you know, this um, hypothesis of expensive um, intestinal tissue, I think it's called expensive tissue, basically um, evolutionary theory that as we started um, progressing from primates and starting eating more uh, DHA and meat and seafood, uh, growing this larger brain, uh, we had to trade something for it because you can't just grow something without giving up something. So we gave up a gut length, right? It just shrunk. Um, like if we compare ourselves to gorillas or chimps, their gut um, is much longer than ours because they don't eat meat. They eat, um, they need to process that grass, that cell cellulose, that plant matter um, through a longer gut. So all that melanin that we had in the gut um, as primate kind of got Mm, concentrated on our um is it called rectus abdominis this this must this kind of mm -hmm. on top of that muscle this is one of the areas in humans where we need sunlight because we have palm c gene receptors there and melanin so um yeah just one of the things that you know as i said like everywhere you look everything is based basically on electrons, photons, and uh, protons. This is like the atomic world and biochemistry is based on that. Um, yeah. The problem is that um, medical doctors don't learn biophysics, right? It's all about like molecular 
biochemistry, but not no, nobody's taught really about circadian rhythm, and that's yeah. that's a big problem because mm -hmm. um, this is the the basis. The it's so foundational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I'll never forget. My, like last two years ago, I guess I had to take my older two teenagers to a doctor, a regular Western medicine doctor for a physical because they had to have a physical to play sports or whatever. And we sat in this office that had no windows and just those, what are those lights called? I forget the name, you know, fluorescent, the fluorescent lights. So we're, we're trapped for some reason they let us back, but then the doctor was busy for over an hour. So we sat in this room with no windows with fluorescent, fluorescent lights. First of all, I haven't yeah, seen a light environment for that long like that in a really long time. Right. I work from home. I'm, you know, so I was just like, I could feel it. I was like, instantly, you know, I'm very sensitive to my, yeah. I notice those things and it definitely, I was like, dude, I got to get out of here. Not to mention they were telling me my kids, what their BMI was and all this. So I was like, get me out of here. Okay. Anyway, I'll, <laughs> I'll come yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Quick question. Okay. You talked about kind of like how you have to fight for your freedom, right? So if I'm listening to this and I full on know that I'm in an environment like that, right? Like there's maybe not even windows and it's all fluorescent lights yeah. or maybe there's windows, but I just heard you say that it, you know, filters out the reds and what, what would you recommend for somebody who's in that boat? So, um, first of all, I would recommend to build a plan to move out of that situation as soon as you can. Not everybody will do it, but nobody, not everybody will want to. So um, mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, we're finishing office work. Not everybody will want to, right? Um, and there yeah. will be many people listening, maybe not in your audience, actually, but many people are dopamine um, deficient because of this blue light problem. And they will not even, this this information could not even register with them because um when you lack dopamine, your critical thinking goes down, right? Um, not not to offend anybody, but yeah. if if this information is kind of doesn't make it doesn't make any sense, try just going out in the sun and maybe listening again. Uh, but um, of course, you can bring in some um, some natural frequencies. We have technology to do that. It's it's not replacement for sun, but at least it's something. So if you bring yeah. in some red light and some UV light when UV light is present. And i um, talking about apps, um, a good app to have for education, because we don't, like you ask an average person, they don't know when um, red light comes in, when UVA comes in, when UVB comes in, and when they fade out, because right. light comes in layers. Um, and um, there is an app for that. It's called Circadian app. Um, you can install it and put on notifications and start educating yourself on, oh, okay, so UVA is here now. Okay, I should get out yeah. and get some UVA on my skin and my eyes, UVB. But yeah, you, you can definitely just, you know, pop out every every hour for a couple of minutes right. and have that uh, equipment in your office. And uh, they don't have to be like expensive stuff like uh, this UVA light. Um, they're also called um, reptile lights. They're like... 30 bucks on box on Amazon and uh red light panels it's better to get a better quality ones um but otherwise just any small one will do also to like put between yourself and and the screen like shine it a little bit not directly into your eyes but bring it into your eyes a little bit yeah. and the skin the skin is the <laughs> solar panel for our brain um and yeah. that's one of the reasons why why we don't have fur because yeah we have this large brain that consumes 20% of all the energy in the body. Um, and where do we get the energy from? We get it from the sun, we get it from the food, and we get it through um, electrons that we take through earthing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, on top of that, really being proactive about your home environment, right? So those same kind of, there's all sorts of lights that you can get. Actually, I just moved last week. And one of the first things I went and got were some light bulbs that go to red light for my bedroom at night, right? The, the, I got the changing ones so they can be kind of like a softer okay. red. They don't be full out, like, you know, vampire den. You can go that mode too, if you want, but <laughs> oh, <three laughs> <to six. laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. But you know, it's, it's when you start to do those things, you know, the, if, if this kind of is outside of your normal realm, when you start to do those things, you start to notice a difference over time and how you feel. And that's really like biofeedback to me is underrated, like start, but, but you have to notice it because a lot of these things are subtle. Right. Yeah. And so 
try out, you know, invest in some, some salt lamps at least, or, you know, some of those light bulbs that can go into the red hues and just start with your bedroom. Just do that at night and start seeing candles. Yeah. Yeah. Candles, you know, and start seeing how you feel and not to mention it's like beautiful. So there's that. Yeah, I totally agree. And (laughs) <laughs> I, I, it reminds me also of, you know, like very well how people, when they go from eating processed food to real food, as, as time goes by, they can't even touch processed food anymore because right. it just makes them feel bad. The same happens with your light environment. When well, you start living by these principles, when you align your lifestyle with the sun, the same thing happens. I cannot stand to be in um, yep. artificial light now. Yep. I just can't. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's seriously bothering me right now, but it's cool. Cause we're talking about, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to have to go get some of those sunlight, you know, the light bulbs that they have that mimic sunlight a little better. Cause you know, we just moved in and these are not my vibe. So yeah, I love that. Right. It's, it, it, it does become like that. You become more sensitive. You notice more versus if you're eating Doritos and soda all the time, you're not, you're not going to notice versus you've been eating super nutrient dense. And then you eat that you will notice it is. That's such a great analogy. Um, okay. Let's talk about melanin a little bit. I want to get deeper into this. What, what do people need to know about melanin? So, um, as you know, uh, we've t- talked about Arturo as Herrera. Um, he's a Mexican researcher and in 12, 2015, he, with a team, um, looked into, uh, like, why is it that ATP, this energy kind of currency that our, uh, mitochondria produce, um, Basically, an adult makes up to 180 kilograms of ATP every day, which is a huge amount. Uh, What is it, like 400 pounds or something like that? Um, But at any given time, we only have 50 grams of ATP in the body because it gets used up like that very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm. So according to their calculations, there had to be something else that provides energy in the body. And they found that it's melanin because... In, as I said, mel- melanin dissociates the water. It takes H2O and converts it into this, spl- it splits it into H, O, and two electrons. Mitochondria, these organelles that produce, um, that, uh, produce ATP and metabolic structured water, um, they actually uh, use H, hydrogen, um, as a proton gradient that um, propels electrons through the mitochondrial electron transport chain at the end of which there's oxygen. So hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, and they, the electron transport chain uses electrons, right? So all these three elements that mitochondria use is what melanin kind of through this magical process dissociates water into for our mitochondria to use. So it, it's very fascinating. And so People um, usually would um, think that melanin, oh, okay, that's like um, darker people like on the skin that would have melanin. But we actually, everybody has, um, we have three types of melanin in our body. Um, And uh, we have melanin in our brain. We have melanin in our cochlea. We have melanin um, in our like adrenal glands, in the liver, in the gut. So it seems like it's there for a reason. And to produce energy and um what destroys melanin is artificial blue light um how can you make more melanin you have to be in uv light from the sun paired with the red light from the sun because the sun contains all the colors of 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 the rainbow plus the infrared that we cannot see and the uv light that we cannot see it has all of that. So whenever you, we use gadgets, obviously it's not the same as the sun because we cannot just, we're not gods, right? We cannot cre- recreate that yet. Um, um, yeah. Um, so melanin is this um, new area that people are looking into and uh, they're trying to synthesize it. And it's like one gram is like $2,000. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> oh um, my goodness. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but melanin, um, as well as dopamine, they start as um, phy- phenylalanine and tyrosine. And these are our, um, aromatic amino acids, which means that they have aromatic rings. They're hexagonal rings. And what are they? They are photon traps. So they trap light energy from the sun. They're designed to. And they convert it into these different things. So... 
we have these precursors uh, like phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and histidine in us, these aromatic amino acids that are photon traps, um, which is one other way to say that we need the sun, right? We have yeah. um, every cytochrome inside the mitochondria is coded to receive a particular frequency of light. Why is that? Well, because we need the sun to mm -hmm. produce energy to produce this metabolic water that is deuterium depleted and that stores that photonic energy in it. Yeah. We are basically like liquid crystals and we we are connected to the sun every time we're in the sun uh, quantumly. Yeah. It's kind of hearing you say that is making me think of how, you know, when you're your kids want to eat junk food or something and your brain goes to, no, you need nutrients. Like you need macronutrients and you need micronutrients. It's like you, what you're describing are kind of like the different micronutrients of the sun, right? These different yeah. spectrums and in combination are synergistic yeah. and work differently. Like we need it's all of those. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, red light is present in the sun from the moment it's above the horizon until it sets so as we are designed to be in the in the sun all the time um mitochondria produce this metabolic water uh with the help of red light only in this um infrared light from the sun and so when you are not in infrared light infrared light from the sun then your, your mitochondria are not producing water. And could it be that, you know, when we use red light therapy and it's, it's been shown f such a, a great thing for many, you know, um, health conditions, could it be it, it works because we're not, we're deficient in exactly. uh, red light, you know? I think so. Because if your mitochondria is not producing water, which right. can store photons, uh, your right. battery charge is going down and this is not a good thing um people more and more are looking into mitochondrial dna over the nucleus dna because mitochondrial dna is what actually controls our cells it's mm -hmm. not the nucleus dna that most research is aimed at unfortunately mm -hmm. so we have to look at those uh little bacteria which are which mitochondria are that at some for some magical reason got a symbiotic relationship with an archaea cell millions of years ago, probably billions of years ago. Um, and now we have them inside of us and they produce energy for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once again, I'm going to bring this to practical experience for listeners in terms of talking about melanin and it, it being able to produce energy in your body. I, I have come to the conclusion, I really think a huge reason that so many people are overeating, of course, it's multifactorial. Of course, we have, you know, flavor optimized foods and blah, 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 blah. But I just think a huge part of that is our disconnection from the sun because you can take a person who tends to overeat all the time and put them outside all day, put them on some camping trip where they're just out all day. I guarantee you they will eat way less that day because they're using the other source of food for our bodies that we're supposed to have. That is the sun. It is literally like food. That's what I've tried to tell my client. And I know you're really, you know, really good with your clients on the, on the sunlight stuff, but I, I try to put it that way. I'm like, it is literally like food and if you don't get that energy from the sun you're going your body's going to start craving it from food and we've yeah. all experienced that every yeah. single one of us you're not outside you know hiking and at the lake and you know camping that night and like over behind, hiding behind the bushes binge eating like crazy you might you know you might have really worked up an appetite and do that but it's different and we've all experienced that and the last question yeah. I have is like for, you know, um, what I've always been taught is that if you do naturally have darker skin, that the darker your skin is, the higher your sunlight requirements are. Do you agree? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you would. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, because you will absorb less um, UV light, um, right. you know, um, and you will produce less vitamin D. Obviously, it's one of the biggest reasons, right? Um, this this is usually where, where I start uh, talking about the sun with people uh, is about vitamin D because people are more and more informed about the, right. uh, especially to what we've been through uh, in the last four years, um, about the importance of maintaining high levels of vitamin D. Um, 
And they think, um, most people actually think that it's the only way, like the only reason to be in the sun and um, right. 15 minutes of sun a day is enough. No, it's not enough. We're designed to be under the sun all the time. And as you said, I think everybody has at least a childhood memory of being on the beach and not caring about eating at all. That's right. because we are we produce ATP, ATPA spins just in the presence of uh, infrared light. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why we're supposed to eat less in the summer when the solar yield is uh, more. We, we get more energy from yeah. the sun. And in winter, um, you know, it works um, like a seasonal eating. You you would eat more protein and fat in the in the winter, especially in northern regions or like higher um, latitudes. Um, nature is just coupled like that. <laughs> it's it's, mm -hmm. it's the, the perfect design. We don't need to, you know, we've been in the last like 20, 30 years, we've been Com become completely dogmatic and like this scientism like the science shows well your science right. is corrupt um anytime i look at a study if if it doesn't align with nature then i i know that there's something wrong with that study yeah it's i know to just c compare it to what nature does hundred percent. You know, somebody just brought to me yesterday like something like i was talking about cassava and they're like i heard cassava's bad and i'm like okay well, I, um, I personally don't jive with all of this stuff on social media that people have been eating this forever and it literally grows in nature and it tastes good and all that. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear your, it's bad for everybody. Cool. If you have a particular issue with cassava, if you have some sort of particular, like, great, but I totally agree with you. We it's, it's the, the ego and arrogance of human beings to, like try to remove us from nature, which honestly, a lot of times does go down to greed. It so many times it boils down to greed. It's either greed over money or fame, one or the two, but it's usually money. Right. And so, you know, I might go around trying to tell people that the, the sun is bad for them because I do have some sort of ulterior motive. Like as we started the episode out, open your eyes, look around, you know, and I hope that this episode has given you guys some, consideration for how you're going to do this because like, okay, for example, I live in Hawaii right now. Right. And so it's pretty idyllic that way, even though I live in Hilo and we have a lot of rain and it is raining right, right now, we still have a lot of sun. We have like 70 something degrees year round here. So we, it is a much more, you know, comfortable environment to be outside in. And people are just happier here, straight up. And I know some of that's from, you know, the Hawaiian culture of aloha and all of that. But at the same time, like, I mean, it is not abnormal for me to be driving down in my neighborhood at every car I pass, people are just smiling. When I walk into the grocery store, people give you a full on huge smile. Like people are just generally happier here. It just seems like people are generally in a good mood here much more often than when I was living in Utah. Nothing wrong with the people in Utah. I'm just saying it is night and day in terms of this like super good, happy, hey, positive mood in this kind of more, you know, because it's like, freezing cold, like eight months of the year yeah. there. I mean, think of when you think of tropical cultures, like anywhere along the equator, think of those cultures and you know, like super, no offense to the cold countries, but you don't exactly think of the same kind of dynamic in terms of yeah. mood, you know? So, yeah. Well, the, unfortunately the harsh truth is that you need to be in the sun wherever you live. You need to be in touch with the elements. And I know yeah. when you lived in Utah, you zipped around in the winter in shorts. That's yep. the congruent lifestyle. Yep. Because yeah, get, it's your, get your cold, cold therapy. <laughs> yeah. There, you Canadians produce, are like, girl, uh-uh. <laughs> you, you produce photons on the inside when you're in the cold. This is how nature made it uh, okay for us to be in in those um, latitudes it all yeah. works in um, you know it's all coupled like the deuterium content that we haven't talked about but it's also like it's higher in the sea on and at the equator but also solar yield that helps you deplete deuterium is higher at the equator as you mm -hmm. go north or south uh, to the poles towards the poles deuterium um, in the water will be less concentrated but also your sun, solar yield is less concentrated. So where, wherever you live, unfortunately, you have to be in touch with the elements. And the harsh truth is, of course, if you live in a warm climate, it's much easier to lead that kind of lifestyle.
Right. That's just yeah. uh, not, no, not sugarcoating, but it's true. Right. Yeah. I once heard this doc, I think he was a vitamin D specialist, but obviously it was a lot of talk about sunlight and the interactions with our body. It's like on Tim Ferriss or something. This is like six years ago. I heard this, but I, I'll never forget it because the, I think it was Tim Ferriss. He was like, it was somebody like that. And the interviewer was like, uh, so what about people in, you know, Northern Canada? And he goes, move. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, obviously that's not always going to happen, but I would say like, I do tell my clients that live in these very harsh, cold climates. I'm like, you need to go on a tropical vacation. That is like a health need for you yeah. at least once a winter, like stock up. But I, if you're, if it's financially feasible for you, like more, you know, yeah. because it is, yeah. Like Granted, for sure, like do what you can to adapt and, and make it happen. And it would be ideal if you live in a very cold climate to take some vacations on, out of pure health necessity to a warmer environment a couple of times a winter. It just makes you think also if not in winter, nothing around you grows, maybe you shouldn't like, maybe we're not designed right. to like, live there, you know? Yeah. So, another yeah. harsh truth, unfortunately. Um, it's just nature doesn't care. Like it's, yeah, it's just, yeah. is, right. It's just, yeah. is, and yeah. we choose what we do. Mm. Um, you have a course on light. I actually true? would like to offer, um, a free seven day string, um, email course, um, on detoxing blue light and basically provides nice. you education on how to, um, block blue light and how to restore your photoreceptors. Beautiful. So yeah. up the link in the description. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. We'll link that up. And as you can tell, she's very like, I love the way that you coach, you know, and the way that you teach, cause you're very to the point, like here's precisely what you need to know and do go. <laughs> so we'll link that up. Daria, thank you so much. This, this has been a fun episode.